God loves us so much that he sent his only son to die for us. And any that would accept him as their Lord and Savior has eternal, eternal life. And they receive the Holy Spirit to give them comfort and peace and joy and happiness throughout this life. Without that Holy Spirit, we'd just be, well, we've all been there. Just miserable people. I'm trying to have fun, trying to find fun and excitement in all the wrong places. And, and you still never find it. But uh, in chap chapter 13, and he goes on, he says, in the last sense of chapter 12 said, in the way of righteousness is life. And the pathway thereof, there is no death. And there's only one way, because, you know, Jesus took the sting of death away for all when he died on that cross. And it went dark in the whole world for three hours while he absorbed the sin of the world. And he can, he can take your sin away as soon as you get on your knees and ask him to take it away and accept him as your Savior. And what a relief that is. What a burden it is when you're living in a sinful way. And you know better, and you, you're, you just can't get away from it. When you get saved, that burden is lifted off of you. And that's just a wonderful thing because Jesus can handle it. He'll take all that burden. He says, A wise son heareth his father's instruction. And God is our holy father, and this is his instruction. And like the word says, faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word. And how can you hear the word except by good preachers? So you, I mean, we can read and read and read. And you can quote the Bible back and forth. But until that Holy Spirit descends on you, that's when really the understanding comes. He says, a man shall eat good by the fruit of his mouth. But the soul of the transgressor shall eat violence. He that keepeth his mouth keepeth his life. But he that opened wide his lips shall have destruction. You know, I've always heard you learn more by listening than you can talking. And uh, a lot of times we want to talk when we ought to be listening. And that's true all through life at work with our kids, our kids around other people. I remember when I was growing up, a kid didn't inter interfere in a conversation between adults. That was a no-no. But they do it now. But we need to instruct our children in the proper way of life. The soul of the sluggard, that's a lazy person, the soul of the sluggard desireth, he wants it, but hath nothing. But the soul of the diligent shall be made fat. It says the soul of the diligent the person that seeks after the word has tried to use the word in their life to get saved, then their soul shall be made fat. You know, I've, in my lifetime, I've, went, I've been going to church pretty regular now for a long time. I did it when Misty was a little kid. I did it. I went fishing and stuff. But, uh, me and Misty got baptized at the same time in Tuscany Creek. But, uh, you know, uh, it wasn't until I and I have quit going to church and backslid. You know, it was just like this. I was a slugger. And all of a sudden, I didn't have that spirit in me like I do when I go to church. And it makes a big difference. I was one of them people that always said, I don't have to go to church. I can go to the river fishing while my wife takes my kids to church. And I can talk to God at the river. Well, that's true. I can talk to the Lord at the river. I ain't got this word in front of me while I'm fishing, and I ain't got nobody talking about the word like you do at church. He says, A righteous man hateth lying, but a wicked man is loathsome and cometh to shame. Righteousness keepeth him that is upright in the way, but wickedness overthroweth the sinner. <laughs> There is that maketh himself rich, yet hath nothing. He makes himself rich, but hath nothing. Because, you know, we think of material goods of this whole earth, but you know none of that's going with us. And if you get that material wealth by ill gains, you've done the wrong thing, 
cheap people, sold drugs, whatever it might be. Oh boy, that, that ain't gonna give you no comfort in your heart. You might have the nicest of everything. But you know, when I was growing up, dad always, when people asked where we lived, dad would say, we live at the big house at the Y. It was 900 square foot FHA house. But to my dad, that was a big house. And Bill Henson's house, he was a bank guy, and on the bypass, to us, that was a big house. Nowadays, those are little houses. Everybody is full. We have a lot more. We should be thankful for all the blessings we have. There are people in this church right here that drove up without running water in their house the whole time. We don't know what poor is. There are people in this world starving and nobody cares about them. Not really. The whole world's against them. But those people in places like Syria and Afghanistan and all these other places, those are children of God too. We need to pray for those people. They have the opportunity to accept Jesus Christ nowadays. There's missionaries everywhere. And the Gideons are coming again, I think Billy said. Yeah. And the, you know, they make sure this Bible goes everywhere. Everywhere. Those people don't make one red cent. They all do it out of a Christian charity. That, that's what he's talking about. That, uh, the uh, lady had, had, had to go to the bathroom and said, which one are you going to? What's that now? I'm in the bathroom, you know, and at our age, uh, when you got to go to the bathroom, you got to go to the bathroom. And I said, I'm going to the bathroom. She said, which one? I said, well, she's got to go to it. I said, I said, do you realize now we're blessed to have a bathroom each? You know, look at that. I appreciate that. Yes, sir. Because I'd use the outhouse. Yeah. But anyway, and bathe in a tub. <laughs> but the point is, uh, people don't appreciate that. No? It's a, it's a, people nowadays have so much uh, ability to be clean, to eat. I mean, I remember when we was growing up, we never was hungry. But we didn't go to the restaurants, and we didn't get chips or chocolate chip cookies very often or anything like that. But we had food, and Dad was a good cook. He raised six of us. But, but we always wanted to know, because we'd see other kids have this and that. Well, I want what they got. Well, that doesn't really matter as you get older and become a Christian. There's going to be people that have more, and there's going to be people that have less. But we should be about helping people that are in dire need, that really need help. Especially like me and Ted and Henry can help this Russian woman. She, according to, the, and she's a good Christian woman. Her Russian Bible's got every page got stuff highlighted, circled, notes. The Bible says a, a real uh, widow woman is somebody that's, I think it's over 60 or 65, 60 I believe it says, and has no children to help her. Well, this woman's a widow woman, over 60. Doesn't have nothing, stuck on a mountain. And we as Christians, that's why we've been helped her. We ain't made a penny on it. But that's what we ought to be about, helping each other, spreading, letting our light shine. It goes on, it says, He that makes himself rich yet hath nothing, there is that maketh himself poor that hath great riches. Now people could scratch their head and go, What does that mean? How can you be poor and have great riches? When you're saved by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, you're rich in every way. The ransom, ransom of a man's life are his riches, but the poor heareth not rebuke. The light of the righteous rejoiceth, rejoiceth, but the lamp of the wicked shall be put out. You know, the Bible talks all over the place about oils and lamps and lighting your lamp. And There's the one, uh, it's in the book of the Gospels where everybody's going to the marriage. Remember that one? And the bridesmaids were headed that way, but one didn't have enough oil in her lamp, and her lamp went out before she got there. You remember that? And that's all a message to everybody. you got to keep yourself revived. You know, revival is always a good thing. Billy's been talking about it. He's got the... Lord's been telling it's about time for a revival. Well, we church goers that come to church every Sunday, we get revived every Sunday, or I do. 
I think that's why you come to churches get revived, recharge your battery. You know, nowadays everything's, uh, even cars are going to be electric. In our grandkids' time, there won't be no gas cars. But the longer you use a, a drill, a cordless drill, the battery starts going down. Well, you've got to charge that rascal up. Well, when we come to church on Sunday, I get all revived up. But during revival, it's a time for the church people, but it's also a time to invite people to hear some good preaching, good music, and get them revived to where maybe they'll start coming to church on a regular basis. And that's what we're all about is helping people want to get saved, and then once they're saved, to help grow their faith so that they can do God's work. Isn't that right? Only by pride cometh contention, but with the well advised is wisdom. You know, uh, if somebody thinks they know it all, you can't tell them nothing. You can read it 50 times and they still won't. They might believe it, but they don't think it, it affects them. I'm okay, because I already know it all. Wealth gotten by vanity shall be diminished, but he that gathereth by labor shall increase. Hope deferred, put it off. It's taken a while. Make the heart sick. You know, hope, that's so strong right there. Hope. The hope is something, hope is something, is, I can't use hope in the, hope, I can't say hope is hoping. Hope is the desire for something to happen and you really want to have, like prayer. Prayer is hope that your prayers will be answered. But it says, hope deferred, that takes a while, maketh the heart sick, doesn't it? But when the desire cometh, it's a tree of life. When you see them answered prayers, it's like, hallelujah, praise the Lord, we need to give the Lord all the glory for it. Whoso despiseth the word, this is the word, shall be destroyed. But he that feareth the commandment shall be rewarded. The law of the wise is a fountain of life. To depart from the snares of death. Good understanding giveth favor. And you know, understanding and wisdom are two different things. You can have the wisdom of, but understanding is knowing how to use that wisdom. Every prudent man dealeth with knowledge, but a fool layeth open his folly. A wicked messenger falleth into mischief, but a faithful ambassador is held. You know, we're all ambassadors of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are all the elect. We have been saved. And once you've been saved, you've got a job to do. Poverty and shame shall be to him that refuseth instruction. But he that regardeth reproof shall be honored. You know, if you're doing something wrong, and somebody with a good heart that loves you and tells you that you need to change your way because God loves you and you need to be part of that, that's a good thing. The desire accomplished is sweet to the soul, but it is abomination to fools to depart from evil. They just can't get away from it. They think it's wrong to get away from their evil life. Well, I can't do that. Those are all my friends. I can't leave them. That'd be wrong. No, maybe you need to leave them. The Bible says to depart from such people. And then maybe you can be a light and they can join you and stay you stay with them. He that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. You know the old saying, birds of a feather locked together. And ain't that so true? Evil pursueth sinners. Now think about that. Evil pursueth sinners. The devil, if you're living a life of sin, the devil just smiling and, ooh boy, I'm not right where I want it. And it's so terrible what the devil can do to other people to you. The devil's not sitting around twiddling his thumbs these days. Evil pursueth sinners, 
but to the righteous good shall be repaid. A good man leaves the inheritance to his children's children, and the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. Much food is in the tillage of the poor, but there is that but there is that is destroyed for want of judgment. Um, you know, you can have something good and not take care of it. It'll, it'll go bad on you. He that spareth his rod hates his son. Children don't want to hear about that part of the Bible. <laughs> he that spareth his rod hateth his son, but he that loveth him chasteneth him the times. Now, when I grow up, you know, there's a different world, and it's going to be a lot different for our little kids, but uh, you knew what you could do and what you couldn't do. Your parents told you, and if you really done wrong, you got chastised. Well, God chastens his people, too, even the saved ones. He said, you need to come back to me. When you, when you uh, backslide, they call it, and get back into the world of the darkness and the evil, God's whooping your little heart all the time. He don't want you to stay there. He, he wants you to be like the, uh, the son that left and had to end up feeding hogs. It's the worst thing you could do. God wants you to come back to it. But when I was a kid, my dad would get a little carried away. He just did. He'd get mad, and that's when he'd whoop you. When he'd be mad, he'd whoop you from your ankles to your neck. And that was wrong. Now, I said, when I was young, I will never whip my children. They will never get a spanking. Did that hold true, Misty? I never gave you a spanking? No, you only gave me one real, two real good whoopings. That's it. And you deserved it. I did deserve it. <laughs> I tried never to do it in anger. <laughs> Like, I remember Daniel, he's a little hard-headed. He'd do something. I told him, you can't be doing that. Don't do that again. Well, he'd do it again. I said, all right, there's consequences in life. Didn't I always tell him that? There's consequences in life, and you need to learn that as a young person. I'd say, all right, you can have a spanking, or you can be barred from your gains for one week. What do you want? Spanking, I'd say. Because I knew he would. He didn't want to give up the game. I'd say, all right, that's fair. I said, how many do you think that deserves? Three. I'd say, okay, three. And I'd spank him on the butt three times. But it wasn't out of anger. It was out of love. I hated to do it. But you need to learn consequences from the time you're little. And the biggest consequence any of us face in our entire life from the time you were born, I don't care if you're 99 years old when you die, there's one big consequence that matters more than anything. Have you been saved by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ? That's the biggest consequence you can have. And that's because once you're gone, and you know, we all want to think, well, I'll know when I'm going to die. Right? We're going to get sick and all that. You know, people die. A young man died the other day of a heart attack, 47 years old, one of them here in the county. And he prayed for that family. Just die. When you die, then comes judgment. The reason you're going to heaven or hell, there ain't no, people can tell you that everybody goes to heaven or whatever they want, this new age religion. There's a hell and there's a heaven, and you're going to one of them. And there's only one deciding factor. Do you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior? You might have backslid, but you still get to get in. The righteous eateth to the satisfying of his soul, but the belly of the wicked shall want. Isn't that so true? You know, before you get saved, you want everything. And you're jealous, and you're envious, and you do anything to make more money, even if it's wrong. But once you get saved, you've got that, that comfort and that satisfying nature in your heart. That so, well, it'll all be okay. I have friends that got lots of money, and I got people that ain't hard to got a, you know what, to 
you know love him. But it doesn't matter about that. What matters is what's in a person's heart. You know, that's a good thing about where we live in Hazel. It ain't like it used to be. But in this area, everybody kind of knows everybody. And you can choose who you want to be around according to their heart. Uh, I know people with money that are miserable, and I know poor people that are miserable, and I know poor people are as happy as they can be. That doesn't define a person. Money, well, the size of your house, the truck, the vehicle, that does not define a person. What defines a person is what's in their heart. And most people here do pretty good, I think. And we're all blessed to have what we have and to be able to live. But we need to thank God for it and thank Him for the blessings that we do have all the time. I was just say, Darby's got kind of lower. Town of town, the guys are church parole, they're out there on, they're in jail, but they don't work around there. That one guy said, uh, what do you do to earn that uh, that uh, orange suit? He said, well, he went to a golf eating place and he went to play some pool and his wife set up the bar having a drink. And the guy was buying a drink. Well, he finished the pool, he went out and uh, he was going it. And that guy didn't like that. He'd been buying his wife's drink, you know. And when I returned with it, he jumped on my back. We got in a fight. So we called the sheriff's department. He said, I got this, I got this orange suit. He had one too. He said, if I did the other guy, I had an orange suit also. So, the moral of that story, don't let your wife sit bar and drink along. We don't talk about over here about uh, stuff about a woman. But here's the thing a bar. And I've been to plenty of them all over the United States and the world. I've been to many a bar. A bar is a bar. It's a place for people to get drunk. It's a place. You take a woman there, here's what happened. He took his wife to a bar. He went and played pool while she sat at the bar letting some strange man buy her drinks. That's what was wrong. They shouldn't have been there to begin with. And if they were, you know, nowadays everything's a sports bar. Uh, restaurants and such. That's the way of the world. But if you go in and get you a meal and you leave, that's probably okay. But if you go to drink and your woman goes and leaves you and goes to the other end of the bar and lets some man buy her drinks and you allow her to do that, yeah. you have no wisdom. That's You're right. about as dumb as they come. That's, he needs to be in jail. He's dumb. Yeah, uh, <laughs> that's kind of, but you don't know that when you live in that kind of life. You don't realize it's wrong. The last test fight I ever got in before I met Cheryl, and you know it was a, over a woman. I was with a woman, went to a party, drinking going on, same thing. I said, we need to get out of here. We leave and God follows us outside and keeps running his mouth. And I got in a fist fight. That was the last fist fight I ever got in. One, I should have never went to a party where there was drinking and stuff going on, and with my, a woman that wasn't I wasn't married to her or nothing. So I just figured, well, that's fair game. But see, that's what we're trying to learn in wisdom. Don't go to those places. It's the wrong kind of place to be. Yeah, that there order. is no there is no Holy Spirit in a bar where everybody's drinking and cohorting and having there is no Holy Spirit in there. I've been to plenty of dance halls, then surely met in one. There ain't no Holy Spirit in there. It ain't there. And if a preacher went in there and started preaching the word, they'd run him out of there. Somebody's liable even to punch him. Because that place ain't, ain't nothing but darkness in there. There's neon lights, flashing lights, people playing guitars, everybody hooting, hollering, whoa! There ain't no Holy Spirit in there. There ain't nothing. It's just the truth of it. You gotta get over to realize that. I didn't realize that when I was going to bars. I was looking for a good time. I was looking to be happy. I was looking for companionship. It's the wrong place to look. Even though I met Shirley. Because Shirley asked me. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. But Shirley didn't go to the bars. She said, Drink yourself off, quit getting drunk. Yeah. I've never heard Shirley say a cuss word in my whole life. Is she perfect? No. Am I? No. But she makes me a better person. Um, 
and we'll end with a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord God, for your word. We thank you that the word was made flesh and washed amongst us. And Lord, that that word died on that cross on Calvary so that each and every one of us could ask the Lord, Lord, please be my Savior. I'm a sinner. Please save me. And Lord, just like that, Jesus said, all who call on my name shall be saved. And Lord, we thank you for the power and privilege of prayer. We thank you for the word that gives us knowledge and wisdom that we may use throughout our life each and every day. And Lord, we thank you for this little church that we can come to and get revived. And Lord, just to be as Billy as he, uh, he plans as the pastor of this church for maybe a revival to come up. And Lord, we just pray that you'd be in amongst it. And Lord, we thank you for Dallas that's here today with us to preach. And Lord God, we just thank you most of all for the Lord Jesus Christ. But Lord, that Holy Spirit, we just thank you so much for that Holy Spirit that dwells in us, that comes upon us, you know, and just makes us so happy and gives us such a life.